Going on a trip, we got you covered. What's up guys, Dan here, Cold Cracker Bushcraft. That's right, if you are going somewhere in the woods and you need a backpack, we're gonna show you how to get that set up. Well, not the backpack itself, but the backpack frame, and then how to load it out. Now, if you remember back just a few videos ago, I taught you a really cool lash, a way to put two sticks together that are perpendicular to each other. If you don't remember that video, click the link down in the description, and you can check that one out. That lash is what we're gonna be now using to construct our backpack frame. So if you're into this whole bushcraft thing, at some point in your journey, you need to make a backpack frame. It's just part of it. It is it is an unwritten rule that you need to do that. Now there's multiple different style frames out there that you can make. My personal favorite is what we're gonna be working on today and that is called a ladder style frame. First thing you're gonna need to do is gather some sticks. Now these can be dry or green wood, either will work. Um, you're gonna need five of them. Now two of the five sticks that you are going to to gather are for your uprights. These sticks need to be a specific length. So when you're measuring these sticks and you cut your sapling, it should go from your butt crack, like the top of your butt crack, right to the bottom of your skull, like top of your vertebrae. That is a perfect length for this pack. If you make this much longer, which you can, you can make it a lot higher, it just rides a little bit weird. You look like a 1980s backpacker, just don't do it. Lastly, the three following sticks that you're going to cut are for your cross members. Now to measure these sticks properly, what you're going to do is you're gonna place the branch across the small of your back, closing your fist around one side, placing it on your back, and then closing your fist on the other. So your fists are gonna come and touch your body, and outside your fist is where you're gonna cut. That's gonna give you a perfect cross member and your pack is gonna fit your back perfectly. See, we're already, we're making customized bushcraft gear at this point. Now, one last thing on the sticks. These things do not need to be the size of your waist. I mean, they shouldn't be huge logs. They need to be reasonably sized. If you make them too big, the pack's gonna be too heavy. Much, much, much of a nightmare. So, what we're looking for is our two uprights about thumb size and then our cross members about index finger maybe even down to pinky size once you lash all this together the pack is going to be strong enough trust me you're not going to break this wood um, so don't worry about that okay so all my sticks are now prepped and I'm going to place them in a rectangle fashion okay um, what you need to remember when you set this up okay is that you do want to leave about an inch to an inch and a half no more than two inches off of each section so when i what i mean by that is if we lash here about an inch and a half off your upright inch and a half extra on your cross member that's going to give us lashing points so that is important um, coming up here in the future the other thing that you can see i already did was i made some flat spots remember with the lash that we're using we want flat on flat so i have a flat spot here flat spot here they will go together when the lashing begins so i'm going to lash all four of these in place the first one or two is tough and don't worry if there's a little bit of wiggle pull your lash as tight as possible and we're going to get this initial rectangle set up and then we will build from there now my first two cross members are complete. What I need you to notice though is the cross members are on the same side of the uprights, okay? Because the third one, which we're gonna be putting in in a second, is gonna go opposite that. So cross members are on the top side. What we're gonna do now is we're just gonna flip the whole frame over, okay? And now we're gonna insert our cross member here. Now, what I want you to, to do with this for a measurement, you're gonna take the base of your palm and you're gonna put it on the top cross member. And then you're gonna reach your fingers out, slide your third one in, and then you're gonna imagine that you have to pull this towards you. So as soon as you can start to get traction, like out here too far, in here, not enough. So right here, as soon as I can get my fingers and I'm like pulling it in, I got it. That is gonna be the perfect height. Now we wanna make sure that this and this run parallel. Just remember this third one is on the opposite side. All right, so I got the remaining 
cross member on. This is the third piece of the puzzle. Now at this point, my pack frame can be done. We can easily start to use this thing. Um, I'm gonna show you here in a little bit how to actually apply straps to this and then put it on your back. That's a simple process also. But once you're done this, we're about 95% secure with this, which again is definitely usable. I've used pack frames like this for a long time, but to make this even stronger without any wiggle in it, because right now it has a little bit, I'm gonna say about 98% solid, 2% wiggle, um, which might drive you crazy or depending on what kind of loadout you have, you might need to fix that. So it's a really easy way. Now I used bank line to secure all my lashings. I think that is the most superior for lashings as it does stretch a little bit, but the tar on the bank line bites on itself, it locks in place, it's the best. But when it comes to securing this, we wanna switch over to paracord. Okay, so to secure this further, we're gonna take our paracord and we are going to go to the bottom section of our pack frame. Remember, this is this cross member is gonna be for your back. This is the top cross member. So from the bottom cross member to the back cross member, what we're gonna do is we are gonna take a piece of paracord and then we are going to create a tensioning knot. Now, as I do this, I'm going to throw the squareness out of this, and that is okay. We don't wanna go so, we can go so far by pulling this tight, depending on what type of knot you use, that you really can destroy your pack frame, but we wanna pull it enough that it goes just out of square a little bit, and then we are going to temporarily tighten it. I'm just using a bowline knot and a trucker's hitch at this point, so I have that one in place, and now I'm gonna go the other direction. So I'm gonna come across from this one down and around and now this one when I pull should pull my pack frame back to square so if it's not I need to open and loosen up that other one but I could tell you as of right now it's working well so I'm gonna get that all squared up and then I'm going to permanently tighten each one of these tensioners. Now I personally like to take this one step further. I tie off the center point. I think it just makes it look a lot cleaner and neater tying those two squares together. So that's what I do. Definitely not a needed step, but it will make your project just look better overall. Okay, so at this point now, my pack frame itself is pretty much complete. We just have to add some strapping to hold it onto our body. But literally, when you add in these um, X's here, it is solid. I mean, to be able to move this, maybe, maybe you can like move it a 16th of an inch, if that, but it is super, super solid. So that's what you're looking for. But now you might be wondering, well, how does that go on my back? So that's what I'm gonna show you. It's, it's easy, wait till you see it. So the easiest simple method for securing the pack to your back is to use nylon webbing. The reason nylon webbing is so nice is because it has some width to it. So if you use a thin rope, you can use it, but it's gonna dig into you, it's not gonna feel too comfortable. Now I do have a pack frame built like this with big one inch rope. Um, it looks really good and it really doesn't cut in too bad. So nylon webbing or super thick rope is gonna work best. So remember the middle cross member, that is what we call the back piece. So all you're gonna do is take your webbing, fold it in half, and then just put a lark's head knot here. Very simple. Pull it tight, and then you have a connection point. Now, if you feel that you're a bigger person and you need this a little bit wider, you could put a double lark's head on here. That will open up the width of the strap. It won't be so tight against your neck. Now to finish off your pack, very simply, you just throw it over your back. And I like to say to people, pull it up a little bit higher than is comfortable. Now you're gonna take each one of your straps and what you're gonna do is you're gonna wrap it around the bottom corner of your pack on each side. So I'm actually taking my strap and I gotta reach back. And after you do this a couple times, it gets really easy. I reach back, now I just wiggle, let the pack settle into place, and then I can tie this in the front. And my pack is secure to my back. And just like that, the pack frame itself is complete, but you might probably might be thinking, 
Well, now what am I gonna do with that? What am I gonna put on that? So, variety of different stuff that you can put on here. I'm gonna show you just a really quick way you can lash something on there, and we'll do a separate video on actually how to pack the loadout for this itself. So we have our pack frame laid out. I have my tarp and my wool blanket folded, which we're gonna go over in another video, how to set all that up. And then I'm just gonna take a piece of rope that I have around camp with me, and I'm gonna begin to lash. No um, specific way here for the most part. I'm just going to use these side pieces that stick out in order to lash this in place. So you see I'm just wrapping it around easily, crisscrossing, making sure it's secure. Come back around here. And again, you could pull this super tight as you go along. So if I wanna pull this tighter, I can very quickly do that. Getting that good and tight on there. And then my last one comes around. And then I'll just tie that off. Haha, -ha, and just like that, our pack frame is complete. I have all my bedding in place. Throw your haversack on with it. And then you're ready for an easy night out. Pretty low profile, pretty light. Put the rest of your gear in here or beer in here and you'll be out and enjoying the woods before you know it. So, fun loadout itself, but we're not done with it yet. For this video we are, but we, we gotta lose these red straps. We gotta be more woodsy about it. So we're gonna make new straps in a future video. I'm also gonna teach you how to properly set up that folded up tarp and blanket combo with all the other gear inside to make your carrying efforts just that much easier and what knot I use and how I actually lace all that up. Just a little bit more detail, but for this video, it's all about the pack frame. So it'll give you some time to get out in the woods, enjoy this beautiful weather, get some sticks, get some rope, tie it all together, and then have a beautiful bushcraft project that you can sit next to your couch and enjoy at home. You just stare at it, don't even look at the TV, just stare at that and then keep watching my channel. And if you you're wondering like when are the videos coming out, click the notification bell below. Also hit subscribe and like below. You can also check us out over at coldcrackerbushcraft.com. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video though, everybody. I, I had a good time building it. Get out, build it, and then we're gonna just keep building this pack frame out as we go along here because they're definitely cool bushcraft projects. So uh, again, thank you for joining and until next video, stay in the woods.